30 grand on that. 30, 50, 50 grand on 50. that. Yeah. So what do you, you got? What's the total total? All together? Yeah. If we're looking at 80,000 for this. Yep. We've got $1.2 million. <sighs> From black opals to pineapple opals, here is the new discovery of the biggest opal mine in Outback Opal Hunters. Australia, renowned as the origin of 97% of the world's opal supply, boasts seven distinct varieties of this gemstone. These types include black opals, boulder opals, fire opals, white opals, crystal opals, opal doublets, and triplets. Crafted into captivating jewelry pieces like rings, earrings, pendants, and necklaces, these opals hold immense allure. Although Mexico, Brazil, Ethiopia, and Hungary contribute the remaining 3% of global opal production, the quality of their opals is generally inferior to those sourced from Australia. Among these varieties, black opals stand out as the most renowned in Australia. Hand-cut in Sydney, New South Wales, these opals are exceptionally rare, with loose specimens featuring gem-quality color and distinct patterns being 5,000 times scarcer than diamonds. A black opal can vary from starting at maybe $1,000 a carat for run of your mill and going right up to tens of thousands of dollars for, for that really exquisite top quality. The formation of black opal begins as water seeps down through the earth, absorbing silica from sandstone. This silica-rich solution is then carried through cracks and voids caused by natural faults or decomposing fossils. As the water evaporates, it leaves behind a deposit of silica, which eventually solidifies into either common opal or, in rare instances, precious opal. Black opal, the most prized and sought-after variety among all opals, originates primarily from Lightning Ridge in northern New South Wales, constituting approximately 5% of the total opal output. Its distinctive name stems from the presence of a black or gray iron oxide base within the gemstone. The value of black opal is greatly influenced by the color it exhibits, with red being the rarest and consequently the most expensive hue. So the most valuable black opal of all is a really bright red stone on a very black base and that just glows. And you don't see them very often at all. These opals showcase a spectrum of colors akin to a rainbow within their color bar. Characterized by a dark base ranging from gray to extremely black, Black opal can also manifest as crystal opal with a layer of iron oxide at the back. However, the presence of a vibrant color bar atop the opal significantly enhances its value. Without such a feature, black opals lacking a color bar or composed of common opal hold little to no worth. Arguably, one of the rarest and most prized forms of opal found in Australia, boulder opal accounts for less than 5% of the total opal production. Its presence is predominantly sparse throughout southwest Queensland. However, the future of boulder opal mining is uncertain due to the considerable challenges involved in obtaining clearance from native title holders and meeting Environmental Protection Agency EPA, requirements for land rehabilitation. It's anticipated that boulder opal deposits may become increasingly scarce and potentially extinct within the next decade. Securing agreement from local Aboriginal tribes prior to mining, a process known as native title, is particularly difficult and time-consuming. The formation of boulder opal dates back possibly hundreds of years, with the gem crystallizing within the cracks and voids of ironstone boulders. Over time, the jelly-like opal solidifies, resulting in the formation of exquisite boulder opal specimens. Boulder opal is typically found as a filling within the concentric layers or random crevices of ironstone. Due to its unique formation, cutting boulder opal poses significant challenges for lapidaries, who must carefully navigate the irregular surface and intricate patterns of the gemstone. Consequently, the cutting process is exceptionally complex and demanding. I like cutting oval. You get to um, know exactly what you found and, and what you got to sell. But if you sell it in the rough, you haven't got an idea what you're selling at all. Found within the desolate, arid and harsh landscape of central Queensland, Boulder opal occurs in the resilient boulder opal ironstone layer, also known as the shincracker layer. The process of locating boulder opal begins with a spotter traversing the desert at high speeds on a dirt bike, scanning for visible signs of boulder opal ironstone sticking out from the ground, known as show. Once a promising spot is identified, a peg is placed and an excavation begins, 
resulting in a hole comparable in size to a swimming pool. The remarkable aspect of boulder opal formation lies in the complex process by which opal colors fill microscopic cracks and crevices within the ironstone. Hand carved by skilled gem cutters, the ironstone must be carefully shaped to reveal the vibrant colors of the opal concealed within. This carving process is both demanding and time-intensive. Boulder opal stands out as arguably the rarest among all opal gems, with its availability having decreased over time. Each boulder opal gemstone is inherently unique, as it is hand-carved from veins of opal color that zigzag through the heart of the ironstone. Describing a boulder opal ring proves challenging, as each piece is genuinely one of a kind, making it a prized and collectible item of bespoke jewelry. Owning a boulder opal guarantees a truly distinct and individualized piece, highlighting the allure of this exceptional gemstone. In contrast to black opals, fire opals often lack the striking play of color that defines their counterparts. Despite their beautiful hues and comparatively lower prices, fire opals are prone to cracking, lessening their desirability, and making them less popular choices for engagement rings. Crystal opals, found in South Australia and New South Wales, are prized for their rarity and beauty. These opals, composed of pure hydrated silica or opal, lack oxides that would impart white or black tones, resulting in their translucent nature. When held up to bright light, crystal opals allow light to pass through, revealing their multi-directional colors. When you're shining the light through it, this is a milky white rather than a clear light. A milky opal is cloudy and white, so you can't see through it when you shine a light. The light does travel through, it's like frosted glass. With vibrant hues visible even in low light, crystal opals are truly stunning gemstones. Doublet opals are created by affixing a slice or piece of opal against a background of boulder opal or colorless opal, also known as potch. These opals offer a more affordable alternative to their solid counterparts, as they are composed of different layers of opal and stone. Similarly, triplet opals consist of layers of opal and stone, capped with a quartz crystal cap on the surface. This cap serves to magnify and enhance the colors of the opal, resulting in a higher refractive index and amplifying the various colors and patterns within the stone. Triplets are known for their durability and resilience, making them popular choices for everyday wear. Australian opal cutters triplets are made from 100% natural materials, containing no dyes, treatments, or plastics. While finding matching opals for earrings can be challenging due to their unique nature, triplet earrings utilize slices of solid white and crystal opals carefully placed on a layer of natural Australian black opal potch. All these types of opal make mining interesting, but something of greater value was just discovered. Opal pineapples, also known as ekite calcite opal, stand as one of the rarest mineral specimens on Earth, with only a scant few being unearthed whole and intact. I have just stumbled onto what is possibly one of the most significant finds of opal pineapples, um, maybe of all time, um, but definitely I haven't seen anything like this for a very long time. So. Opals, renowned as some of the most exquisite gems on the planet, captivate with their individual personalities and unique color patterns, offering a mesmerizing array of natural beauty. Among the diverse forms of opals are opalized fossils, including shells, wood, and the skeletons of various marine organisms. Opal pineapples, characterized by their palm-sized clusters of radiating points resembling the fruit they're named after, represent a particularly rare type of opal. These pineapples vary from gem-quality specimens boasting vibrant colors to whitish ones with opaque surfaces. They take on the shape of the minerals they replaced, in this case, forming clusters of crystals, making them pseudomorphs. In White Cliffs, a remote location situated 1,018 kilometers northwest of Sydney, Australia, opal pineapples are found growing underground. These remarkable specimens, which resemble the tops of actual pineapples, fetch significant prices due to their rarity and unique appearance. Graham Doughton, an opal miner in White Cliffs, serves as one of the primary sources for these exceptional opal pineapples, making White Cliffs the sole known location on Earth where these treasures can be found. Opal pineapples are highly prized discoveries, fetching prices as high as $500,000 in US currency or $700,000 in Australian dollars. Mr. Doughton, a prominent opal miner, 
holds a personal sales record of $320,000 for a single pineapple opal specimen, which can sometimes occur in double or triple formations. We found something really amazing. So it's not a uh, triple formation as such all joined together, but we have a cluster of three just in this little area. And I'm gonna try and come in underneath and bring the whole lot home on a plate and then consolidate it and keep the three together um, as a cluster. Despite White Cliffs being roughly two decades behind Lightning Ridge in terms of commercial development, it outpaces Lightning Ridge by the same margin in terms of tourism recognition. Doughton suggests that despite its relatively modest commercial activity, White Cliffs remains an appealing place to live. He envisions White Cliffs evolving into the Sedona of Australia, a reference to the popular tourism hub in Arizona. The formation of opal pineapples begins with the creation of icaite crystals under glacial conditions in White Cliffs. These crystals undergo a process resulting in a double pseudomorph formation, characterized by an unusual shape resembling that of a pineapple, hence the name Pineapple Opals. Ironically, White Cliff stands as one of Australia's hottest, driest, and most remote regions. According to Doughton, the majority of opal pineapples that exist have already been discovered, as a fortunate few miners have unearthed high-quality specimens. The formation of opal pineapples dates back around 120 million years ago, under frozen conditions. Originating as Ikite, a hydrous mineral consisting of calcium carbonate hexahydrate, as temperatures rise to approximately 4 degrees Celsius, the water is released, leaving behind calcified webbing. In other locations, this calcified webbing transforms into a material known as glendonite. However, in White Cliffs, it undergoes a subsequent replacement during an opal-forming event that occurred around 40 million years ago, resulting in the formation of the opal pineapple as it is recognized today. This process indicates that opal pineapples are mineral fossils, referred to as double pseudomorphs. Opalized belemnites, similar to opal pineapples, represent another type of opal. These ancient cephalopods, akin to squids but possessing hard internal skeletons and ten hook-like appendages for capturing prey, inhabited the shallow Aramanga Sea, which covered one-third of Australia during the Cretaceous period around 100 million years ago. Now, a belemnite is actually, uh, in a Cretaceous period, 100 million years ago, was a squid-like creature which had a bristle part to it, which actually helped in the buoyancy going through the water. Now, it's only found in the area mainly around Cooper Pee, because this was the Edamunga Sea 100 million years ago. When a belemnite perished, its remains sank to the sea floor, becoming enveloped in clay sediments. Over time, Silica gel from sandstone filled the crevices left by the decaying body, eventually assuming the belemnite's elongated bullet shape after the sea dried up. Over millions of years, silica gel hardened into opal, but most belemnites lack the typical opal colors, and those exhibiting these hues are extremely rare. The Aramanga Sea transitioned into an inland desert, with opalized fossils, including belemnites, discovered in opal fields in locations such as White Cliffs and Cooper Petty. While opalized belemnites are exclusive to Australia, fossilized belemnites are found in other parts of the world. These opalized specimens are often fragmented, although intact samples are occasionally uncovered. Nevertheless, the remarkable gems of opal pineapples and opalized belemnites remain elusive finds. Ethiopia, another opal-rich country, gained recognition for its black opals briefly challenging Australia's status as the leading opal-producing nation. Doughton anticipates a resurgence in interest in these valuable stones, suggesting that individuals spending more time at home have turned to jewelry design and begun seeking out opals. Compared to diamonds, opals offer affordability and a rich array of color, light, and vitality. Doughton, though not one to dream about opals, finds immense joy in uncovering the inner beauty of a pineapple opal after spending around 40 hours meticulously cleaning it. Great big piece, I've trimmed it down to it's probably just under five kilo now, so I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, we're slowly getting down to what's looking like an absolutely amazing one-of-a-kind specimen. Red Earth Opal, operated jointly by Doughton, 48, and his wife Sacha Sullivan, 46, serves as a tourism and mining venture. Like many other residents of White Cliffs, 
Doughton and Sullivan have chosen to reside underground to escape the blistering heat of summer. The famous underground motel in White Cliffs has become a sought-after destination for tourists visiting Sydney. Doughton offers 90-minute guided tours three times daily, taking visitors 14 meters underground into the cool depths of his opal diggings. One section of the mine wall even features evidence of a pineapple opal, reassuring visitors that these remarkable specimens are indeed real. Despite its rugged and lunar-like landscape, White Cliffs often lives in the shadow of neighboring Lightning Ridge, located 447 kilometers northwest of Sydney, near the Queensland border. Despite owning a holiday house on the coast to escape the intense summer heat, Doughton and Sullivan's hearts remain in White Cliffs, where they wouldn't dream of living elsewhere. As the leading specialists in opal pineapples, Red Earth Opal has unearthed the world's finest examples of these specimens. Extracting these rare specimens requires meticulous care to avoid further damage, as natural fractures caused by ground movement over millennia often scatter them. I feel like I'm in Jurassic Park right now, just uh, slowly excavating the um, bones of a dinosaur or something. It's uh, nerve-wracking because you don't know how much value you could lose each time you hear a crack or take off the wrong bit. Oof. Okay. Got it. Using a finely sharpened handheld screwdriver, Doughton delicately probes through the host siltstone to locate hidden pieces while minimizing damage, foregoing large mining machinery to preserve the specimen's integrity. Currently, efforts are underway to carefully remove these pieces, still attached to a small amount of host matrix. In a preparation lab, the delicate process of cleaning opal pineapples involves using a micro sandblaster to slowly remove the host material. Various abrasives, picking tools, and gentle acids are employed, along with other specialized techniques as needed, to delicately clean the opal pineapples and reveal their natural beauty. Regarding the value of the most precious opals found in the outback, here are some examples from the television show Outback Opal Hunters. Pete discovers a few colorless opal stones known as potch while searching through washed rocks. Potch is often found near valuable colored opal. Later, a colorful opal is spotted, and Sam and Pete take it to a merchant who estimates its value. They are told that selling the opal in its raw form could earn them $20,000, but if they cut and polish it, they could yield $100,000. However, Cutting and polishing carry risks that could potentially lower the initial value to $10,000. Despite the gamble, they decide to proceed with cutting and polishing the stone. After the process, the black opal with full range colors weighs 41 carats, 8 grams, and is valued at $50,000, despite becoming partially rubbed in the process. Some small pieces of crystal opal were discovered, exhibiting a full spectrum of colors. Although partially cleaned, the total weight of these pieces amounted to 900 grams. It was decided to sell the entire 900 grams for a minimum of $30,000. Under the experienced guidance of claim owner and veteran miner Rod Griffin, the Opal Whisperers set off on the hunt for the valuable Coroitnut Opal, found exclusively in the region. Yeah, there we go. Yep, yep, yep. That's what we're looking for, hey? Rod! Hey, we're just getting the first taste of exactly what we're looking for, which is patterns and electric colour. That's awesome. If Boulder was a, a dollar a pound, I'd be a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the purchase of their claim and equipment, the new team aimed to revive their family's legacy, maximize profits, and mine the Opal Valcel for jewelry. Coroit nuts are individual ironstone boulders situated within a layer of sandstone formed millions of years ago when water and opal-forming silica permeated the semi-porous rocks. The exact process of the choroid patterning's formation remains a mystery, but individual pieces have fetched prices exceeding $100,000. The choroid opal fields have been in existence since 1897. In 2013, Rod acquired the 40-acre elusive mine claim, measuring 600 meters by 300 meters from its previous owner. When Rod acquired the land, he sought advice from the previous owner regarding the optimal digging depth. Initially told to dig to a depth of 17 feet, Rod found nothing upon reaching this depth. Undeterred, he continued digging deeper to 23 feet, where he eventually unearthed a gem. When I asked him where to dig, he told me, and he said, go to 17 feet. I did, and there was nothing there. 
So anyway, I went deeper to 23 feet and that's where I found it. And as you can see where I've been digging, I've been finding it ever since. Every time I get to the level, I'm finding something. Since this discovery, he has focused his digging efforts at this depth and consistently finds treasures. Upon discovering stones, they are taken to Isaac, the opal polisher for processing. Isaac utilizes six polishing wheels, each embedded with different grades of diamond impregnated abrasives, using smoother wheels for the final polish of the opals. In a span of six hours, Isaac shapes 12 choroit nuts, totaling 175 grams in weight, ensuring that their vibrant colors are showcased in full spectrum after polishing. In addition to other opals found, Sophia, an expert mine dealer, estimates the collective value to be $57,000. $250. As the opals originated from Rod's mine, Rod receives the majority of the proceeds, while the opal whisperers receive 30%. Consequently, the opal whisperers' share is estimated at $17,175. In another episode, following a tropical storm that temporarily halted their mining activities, the opal whisperers resumed their search. They aimed to locate the missing half of a nut accidentally chipped by Dave the previous day. Fortunately, they found the missing piece and discovered approximately 300 more Yawa nuts. Yeah, we found it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice little line in there. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, that was worth looking for, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah. Guys, we must have been here filling up this bucket for about 30 minutes, and we reckon we have about 300 Yawa nuts. These nuts exhibited a range of colors, including purple, blue, black, and eventually red on black. After bringing the Yoa nuts to the cutting room and trimming the edges until the opals reached a sawn state, opals displaying blue, green, and purple hues were revealed. With a total weight of 15 kilograms, Sophia estimates their value at $69,000, resulting in an additional commission of $20,700 for the opal whisperers. With aspirations of financing their family mine, the opal whisperers operate in Brandy Gully Lease, Yoa. So far, the ironstone Yoa nuts they've uncovered lack the distinctive and highly sought-after opal pattern unique to the region. Dave, the claim owner, used an excavator to extract blocks of sandstone containing the nuts, but this method posed a risk of damaging the opals with the excavator's teeth. As they continued their search, the site became colorful with the discovery of numerous nuts displaying different hues. Ultimately, the Opal Whisperers collected 200 kilograms of highly rare Yoa nuts. Dave began sawing the nuts open to examine whether the kernels inside contained opal, a technique passed down from his father 40 years ago. Among these finds was a massive 2.5 kilogram boulder, estimated to be worth $30,000, and a yellow stone dubbed the Yoa Moon, valued at $50,000. They believe the moon's complex floral pattern to be one of the rarest formations on Earth. After sawing, the Yoa nut crystals totaled 150 kilograms, showcasing their full spectrum of colors. The gems are estimated to be worth $1.2 million. With the Opal Whisperer's share set at 30%, they expect to earn approximately $360,000. Opal mining is a venture that in itself can be quite dangerous, hence the many regulations being put in place to preserve the integrity of the land. However, the miners often take home valuable opals that make it possible for them to continue mining.